This is the seventh video in this series working with the Make Human model in Blender. And in the last video, we were finishing up with the hands and ready to move on with the legs. In giving names to the hand, and looking over my outliner, I discovered three bones which didn't hold any proper parenting. And these are the thumb one, two, and three bones. And when working on the fingers, the bulk of the fingers already held parenting because they were duplicated from the ring finger, which is extruded from the wrist, and already held parenting. So I sort of overlooked placing parenting onto the thumb one bone, which should be child of the wrist bone as well. So we'll make that child of the wrist bone. And then the IK bones in the hand should also get set to not deform the mesh. So selecting those bones, we can come down into the armature bones dialog and deselect the deform option. And the same on the finger bones. So I'll choose the finger left and the finger IK bone and disable the deform option on those because only the smaller bones need to deform the mesh. Same with arm IK, which I've already disabled that setting. Arm plane and IK anchor, which none of which should be deforming the mesh. With that taken care of, we can now move on to doing the legs. First off, we'll add a hip bone. So I'll center my cursor onto the Z axis and then center it into the model. And I'm going to put my hip bone a little bit forward in the model. Snap my cursor to the grid there and add a bone. That bone will be called hip. I'll make the spine one bone child of the hip bone. So control P make parent keep offset. I'll make the hip bone child of the balance bone. Again control P keep offset. Now we can add the leg bones. I notice in my model that the leg and the grid don't really meet up that great. And there's no grid line which is going to center well on the leg. So I'm going to just have to deal with that as best as I can. And later on, reorient the leg. But for now, building along the grid is fairly important. On the side view, I will try to center the leg as good as I can, though. I'll snap my cursor to the grid there and add a bone. I'll pull the tip of that bone directly down to the ankle. And then zoom in on the ankle to have a closer look. Try to orient that as good as I can. And going into a solid mode to have a look may be helpful, although the bone may also blot it out. Unless, of course, we were to go into stick and x-ray, in which we could see better. And I'll place the pivot right about there. Subdivide that bone. and observe the location of that pivot. It's perhaps a little bit high for a knee, so I'm going to scale the lower leg left bone somewhat, so that the pivot for the knee is more in line with the knee. And then I'll give a bit of bend to the knee. Change my view back and turn off the x-ray and go back into a wireframe. So now we have hip, upper leg left, lower leg left. I'll extrude another bone into the foot, which I'll call upper foot left. And I'll pull that down to the area of the toes. Again, checking in the solid mode may help to orient that bone better. And I figure that should be fair enough where it's at. though perhaps we could afford pulling it a little bit forward. 
Then I'll extrude a bone, which I'll call lower foot left. With this portion of the leg created, it'd probably be easier to work in the separate layer with the rigging by itself. So I'll go over to pose or object mode and select just the layer with the rigging in it. There's a number of bones to add to this still. I'll snap my cursor to the knee, add a bone there, rotate that bone along the 3D cursor, so I'll press the period key first, rotate it to minus 90 degrees. Add a bone at the ankle, cursor to selection, add a bone. I'll just grab the tip of this bone and rotate it by around 45 degrees. This bone will be leg plane left, and it wouldn't hurt to scale this bone either. So I'll use the comma key, go back to MIDI and pivot. Scale that a little bit. And I can also pull it away from the body. Now I'll select the pivot in between the upper and lower foot left. Snap my cursor there. Add a bone. Snap my cursor to the ankle. Snap the tip of that bone to the ankle. Again snap the cursor to the pivot in between the upper and lower foot. Add a bone. Select the tip of the lower foot. Snap my cursor there. And snap the tip of that bone down to the cursor. Place my cursor back at the pivot between the upper and lower foot. Change my pivot back to 3D cursor and select the last bone on my list of bones here. The last bone on my list will be called toes left. <clears throat> and I'm going to scale that out a bit so that it's a little bit easier to work with. With it a little bit bigger we can select back and forth on these bones. So this bone will be toes left. The backwards bone in the foot will be ankle left. This bone will be leg IK left, and this bone will be leg plane left. Now just one more bone to add. I'll set my cursor to the grid along the Y axis beneath the ankle. Send my cursor to the grid, add a bone. Choose a point back of the foot, and exactly how far isn't too important but we want to snap it to the grid along the y-axis and then snap the tip of this bone down to the cursor. This bone will be foot left and the main control for this leg assembly. With those bones added I'm going to cut out of my video and check on my time and I'll be back in just a moment. We don't have very much time left so I'm just going to go over the names of these again. The first bone obviously was the hip bone, that's pretty straightforward. Upper leg left, lower leg left. Then extruded from the lower leg left, which is the important part, is upper foot left. And extruded from upper foot left is lower foot left, and it's the smaller bone on the inside. Then we added the larger bone, which is toes left. The backwards facing bone is ankle left, then there's the leg IK and the foot left bone. In the next video we'll start setting up parenting and constraints to make this leg work and have a look at how it functions. And until then, happy modeling!